Hi guys, my name is Minas and today we're going to be talking about the respiratory system development in relation to anomalies or things that can go wrong with the development. We're going to begin our discussion with a quick introduction to embryology for those that are new with it by talking about the blastula and gastrulation and then I'm going to discuss where the respiratory system specifically comes from in the embryo. We're going to talk about the trachea in relation to the foregut and then the various anomalies in their development. And we're going to finish with a discussion on respiratory distress syndrome. First, let's talk about the blastula. The blastula is a ball of cells that's the result of fertilization, where a sperm fertilizes an egg. There are many in-between steps between that fertilization and the blastula. And then there are many other steps between the blastula and gastrulation. And I talk about this in my Introduction to Embryology video. But for simplicity's sake, the blastula is the result of fertilization, where a sperm fertilizes an egg. That ball of cells travels down the uterine tube into the uterine canal and it implants into the uterine wall. A process of gastrulation will form the three germ layers. These are the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm. And this is an oversimplification for this, where we have color-coded in blue the ectoderm, which forms the skin and various nervous system tissue. In red, we have the mesoderm, which is consistent of paraxial mesoderm, which become muscles, somites. The intermediate mesoderm, which becomes gonads and kidneys. And then the lateral plates, which we will discuss. And in green, we have the endoderm, which form the epithelial layer of the GIT, among other structures. Before we get into the rest of the video, a quick message. Now guys, I'd like to introduce to you my first sponsor and my favorite mask producing company, BNX. BNX produce high quality American made face masks with a strong focus on minimizing pressure drop and increasing breathability across the air filters of their mask. This means more comfort and more protection from the respiratory droplets that become airborne when people cough or sneeze. The N95 pores are designed to allow oxygen and carbon dioxide to freely move between the layers of the fibers. The oxygen molecules are a thousand times smaller than the pores on the N95 and respiratory droplets are significantly larger than these pores. I compare the N95 American made face masks by BNX to the face mask provided to me in the hospital that I use in my shifts and I found that the BNX face masks are significantly lighter, more comfortable and I'm less likely to get any pressure sores over the nose, over the face, or across the bald head. There are many different types of N95 made for all shapes of sizes of face. BNX makes fine fiber and dual texture melt blown substrates. This means the fibers are very fine, low lint, and highly absorbent without any chemical binding. You'll find links and a description of the masks in the drop box below. Don't forget to use my code in the description for a discount. All right, guys, now pay attention to this image right here. Over here, we have a sagittal section of the embryo looking at it from the side. In green, it's color coded to be the endoderm or the epithelial layer of the gastrointestinal tract. Right at the top here, we have the mouth or the stomoduum. And in a previous video, we spoke about how to quickly memorize stomoduum, meaning the mouth, because the mouth is the opening to the stomach and duodenum, stomoduum, just add the words together. The mouth leads down into the, the throat, and this bit is the stomach here. The liver bud is derived from here. And then we have the midgut, and then the hindgut. Focusing over here at the laryngotracheal orifice. Larynx, trachea, hole. Laryngotracheal orif orifice. Over here is the location that the lung bud is derived. And it grows from that orifice down into its lung buds. For perspective, pay attention over here. So we are zooming this bit out, amplifying it, and we will get this. Where this is the foregut, and around about at this location is a laryngotracheal orifice. And the lung bud grows down and pinches away from the foregut. If, we, if this is a sagittal view, looking at it in this direction, this is the cor coronal view, or you're looking at it from the front. So the trachea is pinching off the forga at a location called the trachea esophageal ridge. 
and you'll notice that there are two lung buds that grow and as it grows the lung bud and trachea eventually pinch off the esophagus so then you can comfortably say that the respiratory tract epithelium is from endoderm so the epithelium of the the trachea the bronchioles etc the connective tissue the cartilage and the muscle of the respiratory system comes from mesoderm namely splanchnic lateral plate mesoderm now i have five images down here paying attention to these five images this first one demonstrates a successful partitioning of the respiratory system from the foregut. The esophagus is a single lumen that eventually goes to the stomach and comes from the mouth. And the respiratory system is completely separate to this. So this is what happens in a normal situation. Anomalies or defects in this process that we discussed already of the trachea pinching off the foregut can lead to esophageal atresia and tracheoesophageal fistulas. The most common is a blind esophagus from the superior part with a fistula from connecting the trachea to the stomach. 90% of the time this, that you do get these defects, you'll see this. Clinically, you'll get a polyhydramnios and pneumonitis and pneumonia as hydrochloric acid and other stomach uh, contents enter in to the lungs. There are other types of esophageal atresia and tracheoesophageal fistulas. The other two most common types are when there is a fistula connecting the esophagus to the trachea but the esophagus is still a lumen in itself and some food contents or digested contents can go to the stomach from the mouth. 4% of the time you'll see this variation. 4% of the time you'll have a successful partitioning of the respiratory system from the foregut. But the foregut are two blind-ended sacs. So anything consumed or en entering the mouth into the esophagus will be filling this sac and will never go to the stomach. And any stomach contents will never be regurgitated back up to any, via any fistula or through the mouth. The most rarest type of tracheoesophageal fistula and esophageal atresia is this type. You'll have the esophagus becoming a fistula with the trachea but the distal portion that connects the stomach is a blind-ended sac. Now let's quickly touch on respiratory distress syndrome. Respiratory distress syndrome, also known as hyaline membrane disease, occurs when there is not enough surfactant produced. Surfactant is important for the survival of babies. When there is not enough surfactant, the air-to-blood surface membrane tension is too high, causing alveolar collapse during expiration. As a result, respiratory distress syndrome happens. It's a common cause of death in the premature infant. About 20% of newborns are, can die from this syndrome. But treatment with artificial surfactant, as well as provision of glucocorticoids to stimulate surfactant production, have reduced this mortality. Incidence of respiratory distress syndrome is essentially characterized by how premature the baby is. So if you have a 24 to 25 week gestational age baby being born, you'll almost certainly guarantee to get respiratory distress syndrome, 95 to 100% guaranteed. In the weeks of 26 to 27, you'll have a 50 to 70%. From 28 to 30 weeks of gestation birth, you'll have a 20 to 40% rate. And from 31 to 36 weeks of premature born baby, it's a 10 to 20% and it's only a less than 1% chance if there's a baby born at term. Thank you so much for watching this video on anomalies in respiratory system development. If you'd like to learn about the embryological development of the lungs in a normal situation, then you can click this video that's popping up above my head right now. Otherwise, you can get my book that describes the organ-based embryology in a very easy to understand manner. It's available at drminas.com. Thank you for watching.